ever get that feeling? You're talking and it's like no one's home. They're nodding, but you can tell their mind is a million miles away. It happens all the time, right? It's like trying to have a conversation with a brick wall. Communication, or rather miscommunication, that's our deep dive today. We're always told communication is key, but it often feels more like a jumbled mess of misconnections and misunderstandings. And to help us untangle that mess, we're turning to, well, let's call it a blast from the past. Ooh, do you tell. We've got this article, there's no such thing as communications, only miscommunications. It's from the May-June 2000 newsletter of the International Society for Performance Improvement. 2000, yeah, that's a vintage find. You'd be surprised, even though it's from a while back, the insights are surprisingly relevant today. Guy W. Wallace, the author, really hit the nail on the head when it comes to why our best intentions so often go haywire in conversations. You know, that title alone, there's no such thing as communications, only miscommunications. It's a bit provocative, isn't it? It really is. But it makes you stop and think about how we approach communication. Exactly. Like, we often expect this flawless exchange of ideas. Right. Zero defects, where every message is received with perfect clarity. But as the article points out, and it does this with a very clever visual of two stick figures trying to connect two wires, things don't always go as planned. I love that visual. Simple, but it's so powerful. Because it shows how... Even with the best wiring, those connections, they can get crossed, leading to some pretty interesting outcomes. And in our daily lives, those crossed wires, well, they can lead to some pretty funny or sometimes not so funny situations. Oh, absolutely. It's like that game of telephone we've all played, right? Yeah. You whisper a phrase, it gets passed around. And by the end, it's something completely different. It highlights just how much we take for granted when it comes to understanding each other. And it reminds us that communication isn't just about what we say, but how it's heard and interpreted by the other person. Which brings us to this idea of process variation, a term the article uses to explain those unavoidable misinterpretations. Ah, yes, process variation. It sounds a bit technical at first. It does. But the analogy the article uses makes it crystal clear. It compares communication to manufacturing where even with the most stringent quality control, two products are never going to be completely identical. There will always be these minute variations, even in something mass-produced. So like those little imperfections that make a handcrafted item unique. Exactly. And those imperfections, those variations, they come from our individual experiences, our values, even our moods. We all have these internal dictionaries, and sometimes those dictionaries, well, they define words and phrases in slightly different ways. So it's like we're all speaking slightly different dialects, even when we're using the same words, right? Exactly. And just like with dialects, those subtle differences, they can lead to major misunderstandings if we're not careful. No. But here's the thing. The article doesn't just leave us stranded with this problem. It actually offers a solution, a framework for minimizing these miscommunications. It's called the Huthwaite model for verbal communication. The Huthwaite model. Okay, tell me more. So it sounds fancy, right? It does. But it's actually quite simple and intuitive. Basically, it breaks down effective communication into four key behaviors. Giving information, seeking information, summarizing, and then testing understanding. Those sound pretty straightforward. Let's unpack those a bit. Okay, great. Giving information, I mean, that seems pretty self-explanatory. Just, you know, convey your message clearly. Right, but there's a bit more to it than that. Okay. It's about being mindful of your audience, their existing knowledge, even their preferred communication style. Are they visual learners who might benefit from a diagram? Do they like concise bullet points? Or a more narrative approach? It's about tailoring your delivery for maximum impact. So it's about being strategic and adaptable in how we present that information. Okay, what about seeking information? That suggests a more active role for the listener, right? Absolutely. Instead of just passively receiving information, we need to engage with it. Mm. We need to ask clarifying questions and make sure we're on the same page. It's a two-way street, not a one-way lecture. It's a dance, not a lecture. And I love that because it actually reminds me of that old saying, to be interesting, be interested. Ooh, I love that. And you know what? That ties in beautifully with the next behavior. Summarizing. After you've listened actively, sought that clarification, take a moment to paraphrase what you've heard. So it's like hitting that replay button in our brains. Yes. To confirm, we've captured those key points accurately, and it gives the speaker a chance to correct any misinterpretations. I like that, that back and forth. It, it can prevent so many misunderstandings. Yeah. And then finally, we get to what is arguably the most crucial element of this whole model. Testing Understanding, or TU for short. 
testing understanding to you, it does sound like the secret sauce. It's a game changer. So this is about going beyond just hoping we're on the same page. We're actively making sure of it. Exactly. We're bridging that gap between what we think we've said and what the other person actually heard. And the article gives us some really good tips on how to do this. Okay, like what? Instead of just saying, did you get all that? Yeah, which no one wants to hear. That's a little aggressive, yeah. It can be. You could say something like, just so I know, did you say the new feature will be ready by next week? Okay, so it's about framing it as a check-in, not a pop quiz. Exactly. It becomes a collaborative effort to make sure everything's clear. And the best part, you can use it anywhere, a casual chat with a friend, a big business meeting, really doesn't matter. It's like that saying, measure twice, cut once, but for conversations. I love that. Slow down, be intentional, make sure you're both working from the same plan. The article also points out how important your tone of voice is when you're testing understanding. Because it's easy to come across as, like, suspicious, right? You don't want to sound like you're trying to catch someone out. It should be about genuine curiosity, a real desire to make sure everyone's on the same page. It's about working together, not against each other. Mm. This has been eye-opening, really, just exploring the Huthweet model and how we can use it to communicate better. It's a powerful tool. And it shows that we don't have to settle for constant miscommunication. It's not about being perfect communicators, but about having these strategies to help us navigate those everyday misunderstandings. I agree. It's about being more aware, more intentional in how we communicate. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill that will serve you well in any situation. Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about verbal communication, but as we wrap up, I'm curious about something. This article is from 2000, right? That's right. Before smartphones, before social media, how do you think these principles apply to how we communicate online today? That's a great question and a whole other deep dive. But I think the core principles still hold true. Whether it's an email, a text, or even a social media post, being clear, checking for understanding, it all still matters. Even in the digital world, it all comes back to those human elements of communication. This has been a fascinating deep dive. Thanks for joining us as we explored the tricky, sometimes messy, always fascinating world of communication. Or should I say miscommunication? My pleasure. Always great to chat with you. Until next time, thanks for listening.